Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is the continuation of one of the new series on my channel. This is the colours of the Zodiac. The Zodiac, of course, being Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today, my friends, we are talking Aquarius. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours are associated with Aquarius, which of those colours I chose to create today's look, and indeed how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friends you have got the best seat in the house. As I have said for some time, but I'm oft finding myself echoed by other less imaginative channels. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, so continuing with my new Zodiac series, all four of them. Um, I'm doing the colour of Aquarius colours up there. As you can see Aquarius is pretty bright for a water sign. I really thought a water sign would, would have mainly like blues and purples and be more, you know, water colours. But this is actually quite bright. You've got uh, purples going down to a lavender. You've got navy blue going through raw blue, electric blue, powder blue. Then you've got the greens going from emerald down to a nice lime, a bright lemon or yellow, reds, oranges, and then you've got the pink and the fuchsia at the end. So, because, I don't think I've used this on screen yet, and because of course Blush Tribe are sadly closing down, which traumatises me so much. I had to buy a second Tassina too, because I cannot ever imagine not having that palette. Uh, if you're wondering where the two uh, things went, the um, <laughs> the blue tack gave up and they fell off. I'll sort it another day. But this is the Layla 2 palette. And it looks like this. So you can see lots of greens and yellow. So I think you can tell which section of the Aquarius colours I'm actually going to be using. Um, when I've got a variety of colours like that, I'll tend to go for the ones that call to me most when, on the day that I'm filming. And for me today, that happened to be the greens and the yellow. So, that's what I'm doing. Um, this is still a teaching channel. So, if I go too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there somewhere. Feel free to speed me up. Um, but I want beginners to be able to keep up with me. Plus, my chronic pain means I can't blend as quickly as others. And I don't like speeding the blending up because I like people to see exactly how long it can take sometimes to get something blended out because a lot of times you see with partly blended eyeshadow and you think did you stop blending when they stopped blending on the YouTube tutorial? I think you might have done. 
so I just want people to be able to see exactly how long it can take sometimes to blend things out um, because this is a teaching channel and because I have I've mentioned this many many times uh, I'm starting to hear other channels talk about it now um, Funny enough, none of them mention the fact they've seen it on May 1st, but, you know, karma will deal with those people. But, for a long time I've seen people, even the big beauty gurus, confusing the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes. So, I'm going to insert a little snippet of film just now, and this will tell you the difference between hooded and deep set eyes and it'll teach you the workaround for each type of eye because it is different even though the things or the symptoms or the effects you get with eyeshadow with those two types of eyes are very similar which is why people get them confused now if you've never watched one of my tutorials before bit of a warning it's going to be very up close and personal please don't scream once the uh, tutorial or the close-up is done where I show you the difference between the different types of eyes I will be back to put some of this onto these I didn't mean to flip you the bird then, sorry <coughs> hmm. here's the clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly. And you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. 
and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. Right, I'm going to go in with uh, an Oh My Glitter brush, which I got in a mystery box. I think it was the winter mystery box. I just love it because it's a slanted blender, but it's got kind of, it almost looks like a, the top of a tooth. And it's got dimply bits, and I like that because I get the feeling that's going to help blend things out quite nicely. So, I am going to start off, I think, with Maria, which is the very, very light pastel green in the corner. Bit of kick up, but that doesn't worry me because at least it means you're getting pigment on the brush and obviously I do my base afterwards anyway. So, I'm holding the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure on my eyes as possible. And because this is such a big brush I'm going to start a little bit lower down than I would normally do. And just, I might turn it sideways actually. Little circular movements. Just to blend this in. And I'd much rather go back and pick up more pigment to blend it out than to put too much on in one go. So, what did you think? You'd have seen all four of the, the new series now for Capricorn. Obviously now I'm starting on Aquarius. So what did you think? Did you learn something if you're a Capricorn? Did you learn things about yourself that you didn't already know? What star sign are you? Are you looking forward to your one turning up in this series? I really hope you're not Sagittarius. You've got a very long wait. Bless your heart. Good, I'm going to do them in order. I'm going to try, if I can to do them every, either every other or every three weeks. Depends what other collabs etc I've got penciled in to do. Because obviously my, my Three Continents One Palette collab happens on the first Saturday of every month. So. I've got another couple of films that I've got penciled in as well. And this this I've got I hmm, don't know if you saw my Instagram over the weekend, but um yeah, lockdown fever finally hit and I ended up making a number of different makeup orders, including buying five different eyeshadow palettes. I wouldn't mind, but I've still got eyeshadow palettes here that I haven't demoed for you yet. I've got one from W7, which is a dupe of the Natasha Denona gold palette. Um, I've got 
another palette from Peachy Keen, people that did the Viper Green palette that I did the collab with. Um, I've got the Green Donut and the Green Nine Pan mini palettes from Revolution. Um, the Koala pigments arrived finally from Cleona Cosmetics, the ones they were selling for the Australian wildfires. Remember them? That was for the plague. <laughs> I don't know. We've had floods, we've had fire, now we've got plague. I'm waiting for the locusts and the pestilence and then what is it, the killing of the firstborn son. Oh no, Hubby's firstborn son. Well, can we skip that part of the apocalypse please? Is that alright? Yeah, we'll skip that bit. That'd be great. Thanks. <sighs> Either that or I'll put him in a frock. Pretend he's Christine. This is a really pretty pastel. Right, normally I would clean the brush off before I go into the next colour, but... Because I'm just going into a slightly deeper shade of green, there's not really much point in cleaning the brush off. So I'm going to go into. Let's go into Bia, or Bia, B I A. Same brush. But you can see this one's a lot more. Vibrant. The reason I reverse the direction of the circle coming back, so I do this way going there. I've got to get that phone call. Hold on. Sorry about that. I am back. <laughs> right. As I was saying, the reason that I do the circles in the different directions is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in less than a month. I've lost 14 stone, which is like no answer. 200 quid. Well, she'll call me back in a minute. Mm -hmm. right. She's literally, her and Adrian literally just rang me. Okay. And I rang you. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, as I was saying, I've lost 14 stone. Mm -hmm. 200 odd pounds there or more so the skin on my eyelids moves but by doing circular movements like this and then reversing that direction coming back you're very gently moving the skin that's why you always hold the brush at the end so you put as little pressure on as possible you're moving the skin around so that it helps prevent you from getting like a stripey or barcode or tiger stripe effect Oh, Tiger Stripe, you've been watching Tiger King. Oh my goodness. Um, sometimes this eye, I still get the tigering because of the deep creasing that I've got here. Um, but yeah. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Okay. That was Happy just saying he's going to take my phone. A mate of mine rang with a query about flooring I can't work out how many packs of flooring they need for the size of room they want so they need to pick Chris's brains so because he knows his stuff back to front well he's worked at Wix since he left school so he should know his stuff back to front and of course Wicks being hardware, people still have to mend broken floors and broken toilets and stuff, so the class is essential, I'm not sure I'm very happy about that to be honest, but at least they're only doing click and collect orders, so there's no customers allowed in the store, which is a bit better. Right, I've just cleaned that off on a microfiber cloth, and I'm going to grab a, a slightly more tapered brush. Mm. I'm going in with the green, so I'll grab this one. This is one of my do colour 
brushes, which I thought was quite appropriate given the colour of this. But as you can see, I'm just waiting for my... I just ordered some new brush cleaner. As soon as that arrives, I can give them their deep clean. Right. I need to deepen this up. So shall I go in with Miriam or shall I go in with Zara? Um... Miriam will go better. So I'll dip into that. Again, just the tips of the bristles. And I'm just going to run that just through where my natural crease is and bring it up slightly just so I can see it more at the outside here. So I want to give it a bit of a, a bit of a fake wing effect almost at the edge here. So that um, it, it elongates the eye and brings the eye up the same way that doing a, a wing would do if you were using liner. But it just gives it a softer effect and if you're like me where at the moment um, you can hear it's a nice day out there, it's a Sunday, people are out there mowing their lawns and I'm struggling with my hay fever as it is, plus fibro makes it worse and I've got runny eyes anyway, so liner is most likely not the best idea for me today. But by doing this, you don't have to make it as elongated as that. You can just make it so it just flicks up slightly at the edge and sort of finishes about there. But it'll give the same impression of pulling the eye up and out, which is what we want. And I'm going to pop a little bit of this deeper green just onto the outer corner there. And flip that up a little bit. I like that. Yeah, I'm about, I think I'm about three episodes into the Tiger King at the moment. That Joe's a character, isn't he? It's like when he went into the gift shop and went, oh, uh, I'm going to tell you so you hear it from me first. Uh, we just had a keeper have their arm bitten off. Uh, if you want a refund or anything, I totally understand. <laughs> Say what now? And the fact that she was back at work in no time at all, having chosen to have the hand amputated. It's like, really? She's like, oh, months and months of painful surgery, or take the hand off. So I just decided to take the hand off, and I'm like, hmm. I'm guessing that uh, health and safety there isn't exactly a priority. It's like, where was the risk assessment? Where was the... Can you tell I used to be health and safety <laughs> one of my workplaces that I worked at? Yeah, where's, where's the health and safety? Where's the risk assessment? Where's the what can we put in place to minimise this risk? Uh, you know, let, how about not having people put their hands through cages? Including the keepers when they're feeding them? Use tongs or feeding tubes or something? Crazy stuff. Absolutely crazy. Okay. Got a bit more fallout this side, uh, but that's pretty standard to be honest because I always get more fallout on that side because that is the side that um, <clears throat> was pulled around when I was a kid like four or five years old so 
So I always get more fall out that side than I do the other. So I tidied all my, I re-tidied re everything yesterday. So I could find things easier. No, I can't bloody find anything. It's always the way, isn't it? Right, uh, this is a Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into a Zaya. Which is the bright yellow. And I'm going to use that. Just on the lid, because I'm going to go for a an all matte look today. I think. But it's such a lovely day out there. It really is. It's the sort of day that normally I'd get in the car and go for a drive somewhere, you know. But with the lockdown and everything, police are getting really funny about driving to places. They had a go at some people for driving out to the Lake District to uh, walk their dogs rather than walking them near their house in a built up urban area. And I'm like, dude, it's the freaking Lake District. It's like thousands of square miles of you know, fields and trees and stuff. People were more than six foot apart. It means they're getting out and still maintaining the physical distancing that they have to do. The reason I stretched this out is because of that deep creasing there, otherwise what happens is the pigment packs loosely into the creases and then ends up cascading down my face during the day. But you can see I only pulled it out as far as I absolutely needed to. And as soon as I'd filled in the area with the deep creasing, I let go. This is looking so summery. I'm loving it. I really am loving it. Right. I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait to talk to you for the time I've pressed the record button again. But for you my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Hello, I am back. Uh, I've been asked to do my soap brows on camera. So, I'm going to do my soap brows. On camera, this is the Revolution soap brow thing you get, like a little thing of soap, and this tiny little toothbrushy type thing. You can either use the soap wet or dry. I've actually found, for my personal preference, I prefer to use it dry. And you just squidge the brush in it, and then brush through your brows, brushing them up. give them a fluffier appearance. Yes, I have been out in the rain like this, no they don't melt. And so far, in terms of my pain sweats, they seem to have held up quite well against those as well. So that's good. And then I just get one of these brushes and dip into, I think I'm going to go into Nailer, which is like an olivey green. And then just brush it through your brows. 
Now I had been using pomades, but I was having a lot of people saying to me, Revolution have stopped doing the pomades, they're not on their site anymore. How can we get the nice colourful brows? So I experimented a few times, different ways. Oh dear, excuse me. Including using like gel liners and um, liquid lipsticks. And I found that the best way to do it is either to do the soap and then the powder. Oh, sorry, the size is starting to run already. This is what I was saying to you about hay fever. My hubby's opened the back door a couple of times while people are mowing. My hay fever is like, oh, look at that pollen. It's weird that yellow is looking more orange. Compare the lid to. Isn't that weird? Um, anyway, as I was saying, either soap then powder or brush through with a spoolie then powder then a clear brow gel or a clear mascara to hold it in place. my loves is how I match my brows without having to use a pomade. Check it out, check it out, check it, check it, check it out. Right. Going in with this flat top brush. And I'm going to get some of Maryam again, which is the colour I used here. Just going to link it up with the edge there. Bring it along. That's when my eyes just watered and taken some of the foundation off. But yeah, because I struggle with um, putting anything in the waterline for exactly the same reason as I've been struggling with eyeliner at the moment, doing this is a great way of just finishing off the look. Um, I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go into Sara because that is my sister-in-law's name. And I'm going to use that just to blend the lower lash line out. The brush that I'm using here is the one from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes and just smoking out your lower lash line. You can do it with a smudger brush. Um, I just prefer how this brush does it. But it's all down to personal preference, it's your face. You paint it how you like. And now for highlight. I have not used my 
Supreme Frost for a while in Wet Dream. From Jeffrey, which looks like this. Like a cool champagne. This is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago now or more. And I'm going to pop that just up under the tail of the brow. Both sides. As you know, when I do my inner corner, I like to bring it along underneath and just blend it in to the colour that I've done underneath my lash line. Right, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more highlight on my face, do something with my hair, put some mascara on and choose a lippy and I'll be back with the finished look. There we go. That is my finished look using Layla 2, inspired by the colours of Aquarius. Um, obviously I use Jeffrey's Wet Dream highlight, I've got glitter everywhere now. Mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa one. Lippy is my little mini bite honeycomb lippy, which I really like. I think it complements the sort of citrus eye look really nicely. So, to my book of ideas. Now, Aquarius of people born between January the 20th and February the 18th. They are independent, inventive and unusual. And as you know, with each one of these films, you'll find out a little bit more about the star sign and their traits. So, uh, you're just going to have to keep watching for the other three films. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. You are still getting slaughtered uh, at the back of the queue disappearing and um, why am I at a weird angle do you know what I don't even know if that's made it better or worse um, I'm still getting the issue that people every time I put a film up I'm losing at least one sometimes as many as five subscribers don't ask um, I've kind of got used to it now to be quite honest but yeah, please double check you are still subscribed. Even if I'm in your news feed, you might still have been unsubscribed from me. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the, in the comments box below. Given the colour choice for Aquarius, which of those colours would you have chosen? Which one's cool to you? to do an eye look with and why are you an Aquarius are you drawn to specific colors in that spectrum again if you are please let me know I'd be really interested in fact if you do comment and tell me which of those colors calls to you most I would find it fascinating if you could let me know your star sign as well please and thank you Hitting the like button really helps with the algorithm, helps push my film out to other people and maybe help me grow a little bit and spread the 4F love to more people. 
If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you liked. If you would like to join the 4F family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring my bell for notifications, and then say yes however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes. And then hopefully you'll get maybe one in four notifications of my films. Speaking of which, I have got a lot of other films that you can be perusing. Pick a playlist, and as I have said, and oft been echoed by other channels, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Uh, you could you could spend ages watching my films, and if you're locked down and you've done all the cleaning and the housework. Might as well chill out, biscuit, cup of coffee, cold drink, maybe an adult beverage, depending on the time of day. Uh, yeah, just if you don't want to fall asleep, don't choose the relax playlist because you, you probably end up dozing off quite quickly. However, if you are struggling to sleep, feel free to choose the relax playlist and doze off quite quickly. Right, my darlings, that is quite enough waffling for me for one minute. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.